Hey guys, Glenn here. Today I'm reviewing the Fix Dry Filament Dryer NT1. This filament dryer features a 110 watt heater, temperature and humidity control in real time, simultaneous drying and printing, a large capacity dry box that fits two filaments, and it goes up to 70 degrees Celsius, which you need for certain filaments. I'm going to unbox it, try it out on actual real world products, and see, does it work? And would I recommend it? Let's get into it. Here she is, fixed dry model NT1. Let's open her up. In the bag you got, you got your tube, user manual, and this thing that goes right here to deflect the heat. Looks very solid, not super heavy, but solid heavy, like it's gonna, it's not a piece of junk it seems like. I'm gonna read this and let's start it. Now the cool thing about this, um, it, it depends on what you like. Some of them have covers that um, re you know remove and they stay on the unit and go up and down. This one is a removable cover. I don't mind either way really. So I'm gonna remove the cover. This cover, this cover features grommets throughout. Um, there's actually ten different grommets that you can use. You can do two in the front. Three up top, three up top on the other side, and then another two in the back, so that you can use this while you're printing with ABS or something TPU, it's something that's uh, very hygroscopic. It has rollers here. So they do give us this handy dandy little recommended, recommended temperature settings, which pretty much every filament dryer that I've ever reviewed uh, gives you something like this, which is, you know, pretty accurate. Let's turn it on. Okay, to start, you're going to press this. You're going to change to whatever you want. Let's say if you want PLA, they're recommending 50 degrees Celsius at greater than or equal to four hours. Then we're gonna go here, put it down to four hours. So say four hours total, boom. Now it's running. Now, extremely easy design, super easy to see. A lot of the other filament dryers that I've tried um, are not this easy to see, for sure, because they're usually black and white, and it's a lot easier to use. It's not as confusing as some of them. Some of them are like, kind of just gotta figure out, or you gotta, you have to read the manual. Here, I don't even have to read the manual. It's, it's pretty easy. You turn it on, go here, boom, boom, done. Um, so we're gonna do this, for, we're gonna put it back on four hours. I'm gonna put a spool in, and we're gonna see, I'm gonna show you the difference that it makes with a PLA after four hours. Now, I'm gonna use this red filament by RBD that I've been having sitting out forever um, because I haven't really been printing red in a long time. So, I previously printed a Cali Dragon with this, uh, which came out kind of terrible because it's it's just been out for like at least a year. Um, and and uh, throughout summer, which it gets out to, up to like 70% humidity, which is way too high. We're at like about 40 right now, uh, which is you know good to be under that finally for winter. Not that I like winter, but we're gonna put this on for four hours. And I'm gonna show you the difference in this PLA before and after. All right, the results are in. I have not only the PLA, that I printed, but I also have a PETG. But we're gonna get back to that later. 
this is a this is what the how the PLA came out. You can see quite stringy. Um, it's been open for about a year. It's uh, definitely you could definitely use uh, you know some drying out. And you can tell it's really really wet. Let's look at four after four hours in the dryer. What it looks like. Prints like almost new again. You know, super super old filament, but um, this is a stress test, so you're gonna get this with just about any brand new filament. It's gonna look like this or worse. Um, now I also tried the PETG, and I'll show you that. This is what it looked like beforehand, and this only requires like a couple days out in really humid environments. The PETG, um, you can see it's super super stringy. Definitely needs to be dried out. Um, it becomes completely unprintable. Uh, another couple days, it just wouldn't work. This is after I put it through the dryer in PETG settings. We do 70 degrees. Kind of hard to see the black. That's all I really print in PETG is black. So that's all I really have. Um, at least that's, that I know what age it is. And you can see it's almost like new again now who would i recommend this dryer box to if you're just a hobbyist and you only have like maybe one or two 3d printers it might be too much of a dryer box for you you might want to go to the single version which i reviewed a lot of them if you want to go check those videos out but if you have five or more printers you might want to consider this you'll never really have to upgrade it um, it'll just be the dryer box that you always use because it goes up to 70 it's as high as you're really going to need it um, I have 16 3D printers on average at my print farm, and I need at least this, if not a bigger dry box. However, I've not been sent a large dry box uh, to, for review yet, so I just use all the dry boxes that they sent me to review at the moment. But if it was me, I would definitely purchase this out of all the dry boxes that I've tried out so far, because this one is the easiest to use, it goes up to 70, it takes two spools, you can run the PTFE tube any way you want uh, so that you can print on demand without having to have your, your filament get wet. The display is super easy to use, it's colorful which is really cool, a lot of them are black and white, I'm not too much of a fan of it, and they're confusing. Um, it's not that much of a problem once you get used to it, but for a product it should be this simple, sometimes they're just not. Um, and some of them also only go up to like 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. 70 is really needed for this PETG or more, in my opinion. As you see, the results speak for itself. Uh, it does work very well. I don't have to put dry packets in this. Some dry boxes make us put silica packs in them, which is kind of weird, and I'm not sure if it's a fire hazard or not. So this doesn't require any silica packets. It just works. It has a very powerful fan, but it's also not loud. But you can hear the fan going in there. Some of them don't even have a fan um, that I've reviewed before. That, that That's an issue. This is actually circulating, uh, which it, it worked very well. So I would definitely recommend it um, if you own at least a couple printers or more. Um, if you have less than that, I would get this if you were planning on upgrading your farm to actually having 5, 10 printers. Um, or if you have a lot of filaments sitting out. And if you ever have the need to dry more than one filament, which... For me, for my purposes, I need to dry multiple filaments at once when I discover things, especially in the summertime when it's so, so humid in here. Once we start getting above like 55% humidity, uh, it really starts getting things stringy and they don't recover until I dry the actual filament. I also have other ways that I keep my filament dry. So you also don't need a dry box too often if you're going to just keep your filament dry which I do, I actually keep mine in bins. I have a video all about it with silica beads that um, are renewable. And how I keep my filament dry uh, for years now, and I can go back to filaments years later without even having to dry them. Uh, I would check out that video. I'll put a link in it down below. So there you have it. Those are my results. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe for more content just like this, especially how to make money with your 3D printer. Have a good day.